We, to a great extent, behave, think, react because of some previous experience that we've had. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Somebody said that, that adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it suggests this is one of the first things that you want to do when you're facing a challenge. You want to get unstuck. Evaluate where you are. Look at it. Assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What role did you play? Earl Nightingale had a saying I like. He said, all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. What has brought you to this point? What did you learn from it? Are you learning anything? Or are you doing it over and over and over again? Somebody said that insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Are you bigger and better because of it? Because it's not going to leave you until you grow through it. A friend of mine went through a divorce. My best friend. He had a wife that did not love him as much as he loved her. It was his first real true love. He was a very religious man. Did not believe in divorce. He made a mistake. And he paid for his mistake with a lot of pain, a lot of tears. And there came to a point where he knew he should have gotten a divorce. But he was stuck. He was stuck in something called revenge. He said, she's made me so miserable, I'm going to pay her back. He was stuck. And he stayed in there longer than he should have because it began to attack him. It began to affect him psychologically. And as a result of that, when he eventually did get a divorce, he took that same attitude to other relationships, looking for something to go wrong. He was burned so badly, he did not want to risk pain again. He was going in relationships trying to avoid pain. When it became too close, he would do something to make sure the relationship did not work. He would always try and find something wrong with the person because they're no perfect people. So if you look for it, you can find it. He was stuck in revenge. Another friend of mine, working on a job, loved the company very much, expected to retire there. And one day they call him in the office, ask him for his badge and identification, told the security man up, walked into his desk, told him he was fired and he had to leave then. He was devastated. And if you came anywhere near him, he will tell you his story, as we all have stories. Even when he got a job, he went on the job telling anybody who would listen how they fired him unjustly. And he always ended with, it wasn't fair. Life isn't fair. Life just is. It's not fair that birds eat worms, and they do. But he's stuck in the fact that it's not fair. I don't deserve that. They were wrong. Another friend of mine, we called him Chicken Man. He had a feather in his hat. He had a toy chicken on top of his car that he would drive around the area in downtown blinking his lights and occasionally blowing his horn. When he got out of his car, he would, drive, he would walk downtown with a baby carriage with two little baby dolls in there and a picture of a woman. And when you say something to him or came near him, you would hear him making the sounds of a chicken. All of us used to laugh at Chicken Man. We didn't know Chicken Man's story. Chicken Man woke up one morning around 3 a.m. and his house was on fire. He panicked and he got out of the window and left quickly only to get outside to hear his children and his wife screaming for help. He ran back to the door to go in to save them and the flames were too hot, too awesome. He tried to get in, he couldn't get in. He was desperate, frantic 
Pretty soon the cries stopped. They perished in the fire. His brother-in-law came, found out that his sister had died and his niece is in the fire. Grabbed chicken man and started beating him. You chicken, why did you save my sister? You're a chicken, you're a chicken. When the people pulled him off, chicken man, they picked him up and said, are you all right? And chicken man looked at him and he started making the sounds of a chicken. He never ever overcame that tragedy. He was stuck from that experience. None of us knew why Chicken Man went around with this picture and these little dolls. I was reading a book on forgiveness and they had a line in there that says, forgive and grow. Well, you see your mind is, is, you know when you go into a service station to get gas, you don't go in there and just start pumping. When you push the lever up, it clears the previous bill. By the same token, if you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is what are you going to do about it? Huh? How long are you going to tell everybody at the bus stop and anybody who would stand and listen to you? How long are you going to repeat the same thing? Don't go around telling people what your story is. Everybody has a story. 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. All of us got stories to tell. Chicken Man allowed his tragedy to, to destroy his life. All of us have experienced some tragedy and if we haven't, we will. And you can either let it destroy your life or you can build upon it. You can permit it to let, you, let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how much you work on yourself. There are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's Law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. And you have to deal with it. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Continue to move. Stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. Repeat after me. Help somebody. And help yourself. Because what you give is what you get. Find somebody that you can help so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. Sometimes you have to just back up and go within yourself. A bow and arrow, you, you can't take a bow and just push it out and out. You just can't push the arrow out. You have to pull it back and then release it. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you're under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic, just like a guard. You know, you know weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, 
If you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it and you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If, if it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. Say, yes, I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. The next thing that is important is that expect things to get better for you because they are. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. Repeat after me, there's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. What are some of those things that you can do during this period of time? Go for walks. Do some things for you. Just go for a stroll so you can engage in some reflective thinking on life, on yourself, looking and enjoying the universe, smelling the roses along the way. Listen to upbeat music, music that inspire you. I have only but goodies. I have strategies that I engage in to recharge my batteries. Very good friend of mine died the other day. I had a program for myself. I have books that I read that inspire me, tapes that I listen to that fire me up. Because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. The other thing is take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are. And the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. <laughs> And he said, the people that get along in this life look around for the circumstances that they want and if they can't find them, they make them. They create them. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies and changing your strategy means reinventing your life. Recreating you and you have the power to do that. Next thing is separate what you do from who you are. That's what the guilt trap is about. All of us have done some things that if we had them to do over again, we wouldn't do it again. There are a lot of things that if I had it to do over again, if I knew then what I know now, I would have done it differently. Well, it didn't happen that way. So as you're in the process of reinventing your life, write a description of the kind of person that you want to be. What are the things that you must overcome? What qualities about your personality you know that you're going to have to change because those particular characteristics are liabilities to you? What are your assets? What are your strong points? Look at and evaluating yourself to make that determination. 
The other thing is that in order to get out of a rut, we need some coaching. Find some trusted critics. People that you know care about you and love you. So there's some things that keeps us from growing and getting out of ruts. Number one, we identify with feedback. We take it personal when someone wants to give us some feedback on where we are falling short and tell us about our blind spots. We want to have everything being positive about us. We're not perfect. It's, it hurts. I, I have a friend who's a trusted critic. I don't like him, but I love him. He doesn't tell me the things I want to hear. He tell me what I need to hear so I can grow. It hurts. It hurts when he put me on the hot seat. I can't stand it. But that's the only way that I can grow. And I'm glad that he loves me enough to risk our friendship to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. The other thing is about life when things happen to you when you permit things to use you you can't change the past but you can interpret you can reinterpret how you see it so when you begin to look at your past give an interpretation that empowers you that's where I used to be that's not where I am now I'm growing now I want you to think about in your mind right now, think about some particular event or act in your life that you feel very bad about, that you really regret that that took place. If you had to do over again, you would do it differently. With that there, I want you to see yourself in your mind's eye and say to yourself, I love myself unconditionally. And I forgive myself. If I knew better, I would have done better. Let me tell you something about the mind, how it uses you. Tell you something super stupid that I used to do. Do you know for years, I hated my mother and my father, whoever they were, because they gave me away as I thought at that point in time? And guess what? I didn't have any faces for the hatred because I never saw either one of them. And I said, I hate them for that. And then once I forgave them and said, it's okay. Had they not given me away, I would have never been blessed to have the mother that I have, who to me is the greatest mother in the world. So the universe unfolds as it should. But when I went through this process, saying forgive them, I remember in my mind as I was trying to picture these people, I had two individuals in my mind standing there with no faces because I didn't know how they look. But I released that. I let that luggage go. Think about somebody that you've hurt, somebody that you've disappointed, either deliberately or inadvertently. Look at them in your mind's eye and say, I forgive you. Boy, that's a heavy load to let off. If you want to be forgiven, you better forgive somebody. Let it go so you can grow. It's not easy, but through practice and practice and practice, practice makes what? Absolutely not. Dismantle that belief system. Practice makes improvement. You can always better your best. You can always go beyond anything that you have ever done. You never hit a state of perfection. You're always bigger than what you do. Read inspirational books, of course. Listen to tapes that begin to inspire you. And stay around people who will empower you. People that will help you feel good about who you are as you're in the process of transforming 